Hello, in this video, I am going to show you how to set up Cocos 2DX version for on Linux for Android development. If you want to check it out for Mac, for example, feel free to watch the Mac videos or, you know, the Windows set of videos as well. So a couple of things we need to download. First of all, we need to download Cocos. So go to Cocos.com and I'll provide a link to every, every website that, you know, we visit every website that you need so you don't need to type it out but you can do not all that stuff so then you load up and you showing like a sort of mobile version because uh, let's see if i can zoom out a little bit there we go so you'll look more like this something like this probably go to products download i mean i've zoomed in by 200 percent just so it's easier for you know people to see um, so click download it could be any version 4 really like obviously version 4.0 is the latest currently and start downloading this i've already got it downloading downloaded so i'm going to cancel it next we need to download android studio if you've already got android studio fantastic then you don't need to download it and just open that up go down to here Download Android Studio. And click on accept. Download that. Should we have a thing that's 700 meg? And then just I'm going to cancel it. You, you shouldn't cancel it because I've already got it downloaded. So now what we need to do is set all of that up. So if we go to... I've put it all in the documents directory in a folder called development. The reason I've done that is because it's just an easy way to organize stuff. Plus we want to keep this all in one location. We don't want to be moving stuff around. Okay, so from here, we need to extract these two. So if we extract Android Studio, so, so extract, you know, here, for example, it's just extracting it. Depending on, you know, what sort of drive you're using, this is an SSD, so it's pretty fast. If you're using a hard drive, it might take a little bit longer, but just wait patiently. And I'll recommend renaming to Android Dash Studio. This is literally just the same folder that I've already extracted. As you can see, it is the exact same. So I'm going to delete this. I recommend just rename to something like that. Get rid of the version number. Just so when you do update it within that folder, it's just nice, clean, and it looks better. So we want to do something similar for Cocos 2DX. So click Extract here. This one should be even quicker. And again, just rename that to something like Cocos 2DX, like I've done. These are the exact same folders. So I'm going to delete that. So in this folder now, what we need to do is run the setup.py command. And we also want to run the install dependencies linux.sh. So first of all, I'm going to go to terminal. And let me put this here a second. And I'm going to say cd. So that just, you know, is changed directory. I'm going to cd to this directory here. And like I said, we're going to run a couple of commands. So let me do that. Okay, so let me snap that one. That's <laughs> uh, be good enough. And we need to run this one here. So if I just type in ls, just list everything that's there. So to run it, you do dot forward slash install. And um, there's only one thing that starts with install. So I'll press dash, I mean tab, not dash tab. It pops it up, click enter, press Y, enter, put your password in. This is the password for your user on Linux. I am typing it. It doesn't show anything that's a security feature, but it does type it, just bear that in mind. And this will just download any dependencies that it needs. It may take longer for you. I've already done it. I've already got the dependencies downloaded in advance. Next, we need to run the setup.py file. Again, similar process. Dot forward slash setup.py. Not P-U, P-Y. Okay, so if we scroll up, it's basically configured some cold costs, uh, you know, environment variables. It's asking for the NDK root, which is required for Android development. But we're going to handle all of that in Android Studio. So we can then press enter to skip. It's asking for the Android SDK root. Again, we're going to handle all of that within Android Studio. Click enter. And we just literally need to run this command. Uh, run this command here. So just right click, copy, paste, click enter. It is really quick. And to, let me just click screen. And to know if Cocos has installed correctly, just type in the keyword Cocos. 
like that. If you don't get an error, if you get something along these lines, it's all good to go. If you don't, just close the terminal down, reopen it, and you know you can also open you know, a terminal from here as well, for example. And if that don't work, just give your computer a restart. Sometimes the environment variables can take a restart to take effect. And let me clear the screen. So now Cocos is actually all set up. What we need to do is actually create a project. And I'm going to just CD to my desktop. That's where I'm going to create it. So this is just an easy way to CD there. I'm going to put Cocos new. So the new command is to create a new project. I'm going to say epic game space dash L, which is language. CPP for C++, JS for JavaScript, and Lua for the Lua binding. So CPP, that's the minimum that you need to run, I mean, create a project. We can also put dash P, which is package name, something let's say dot com, I mean, com dot sonar systems dot epic game for example. And you know, obviously, you can use your own domain name, your own company sort of structure for this. Click enter, you'll just create it again. If you're on a hard physical hard drive, it may take a little longer. It's super quick on because this is I've got it on SSD. On my Windows tutorials, it was pretty slow doing some of the steps because I had it on a hard drive. So just, again, this is something to bear in mind. Okay, that's it. We don't need the terminal anymore. If we open this up, we've got classes, which is where all our game classes will reside. The Cocos 2D folder, which is just the Cocos 2D library. We don't need to touch that. We got resources where you know images fonts and eventually audio uh, for example and we got some project files the one we're interested in this video is project android and we need to import this into android studio so now let me show you how to launch up android studio so in here go to the bin folder and we need to launch up this studio.sh we can't double click it we need to run it you know the same way so we do need to run that again uh, we need to run it the same way, so we need to put a CD and navigate to this directory, click enter, and I believe it was called studio.sh, wasn't it? Yes. So to run that, dot four slash studio.sh. Okay, that's launching. Ignore any warnings that are in the console. If it's the first time you are launching it, it may take a little longer. It will go through some setup process. It's just going to ask you for your, you know, theme, you know, whether you want a dark theme or a light colored theme and a couple of other basic stuff. It'll ask, also ask you to install SDK. So just install the latest SDK and the ABD manager as well. So once you've all got all of that set up, what I want to show you is a couple of things. First of all, having to do this command every single time is not very convenient. So go to configure, go to create desktop entry, and you can either do it for just yourself or all users. Click OK. It'll ask you for your password. And just type it in, click enter. And now, if we go here, it appears in our list of applications. It's a lot easier to open it up. Now, that's, again, just an optional step, but highly recommended. And next, we want to go to configure, SDK manager, and go to, true, go to Android SDK. Make sure you got one of these downloaded. So I've already got 9.0 downloaded, you know, and you can download the latest one or even a preview version if you really want to, to download it. You tick one of them and click apply and it will go through the download process and just accept anything that it asks. Next, in SDK tools, you need the Android SDK build tools that should already be downloaded. Anything that isn't, just download it. So you need that. NDK, this probably won't be downloaded. CMake, Android emulator, Android SDK platform tools, Android SDK tools, and no, you don't need a Google web driver, so that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, so just make sure you've got everything else downloaded here. And uh, if you have sort of like a line through it, that means it's downloaded, but there's an update available, and you can just press it, tick, and then press apply. And then we can click OK. All of that to download can take a bit of time, so just bear that in mind. We also need to create a virtual device. So go into AVD Manager. And in here, so let me actually delete this. So this is the screen that you'll have. Create virtual device and select a device template. I'm going to select the Pixel 3a, click next. 
and from here so hard to see but it's saying system image must be selected to continue so if I also expand this none of these are downloaded but I do have one downloaded here I've got the this pi version downloaded which I can use you can use one from recommended or you can use one from these and if you don't have any downloaded you know click download you'll go through this process this can take a while from these are you like a gigabyte or so so it can take a bit of time so it's better web bear that in mind so I've got one right here so I'm gonna use that so select it click next and you can rename your AVD you only leave the default select the default orientation and do some advanced settings like how much storage you have you know any sort of changes in the processor stuff all of that you, you know you can change quite a lot here so click finish and we want to launch this up once of time just to launch you up for the first time and if you get any problems while you're trying to create it something like vtx or svm then that will mean you'll have to enable a setting in your bios if you get any problem regarding that re to do with the virtual device let me know let me know what motherboard you have or what computer and i'll help you you know get through those steps this should automatically be you know enabled but if it's not you know i'll help you okay so that's all launched up and we can just click this and it'll launch up really fast afterwards anyway no offense that wasn't too slow and now what we can do is import the project so go to import and if I click this button that takes me to the desktop so that's why I like creating on the desktop it's easy to find go to your project select proj.android click OK it's going to import all of this stuff into it and we can close all that down you want to wait for all of this to complete all of this building all this indexing this can take a bit of time especially if it's the first time you're doing it because it will download you know some version of the grade one some other stuff as well so again just bear that in mind so mine's done it pretty quick because i've already done it so there are a few sort of things that we need to fix first of all we need to fix this android grado plugin is ready to update the current grado plugin that is set doesn't work so you need to update it so click update click update mine will be super quick because i've already you know done this in a previous project therefore this version of grado has already been downloaded that has been configured if you get this error ndk not configured even though you downloaded it go to file project structure sdk location android ndk location if you click the drop down it's right there for some reason it doesn't by default select it so just select that click apply click ok it's going through that build process again okay so that's all good so again just wait for all this indexing to complete just gonna have a little snack while we wait okay so that's completed you might notice here it says it's sort of hard to see because again i've got it quite zoomed in it says device supports x86 but apk only supports arm ea bo so we need to fix that to fix that and also yeah oh regarding that grader stuff if we go to grader dash wrapper properties this will probably say 5.1.1 by default if the update button didn't appear just change it to 5.6.4 when you make a change you'll get this click sync now and then you'll you know make the change download anything that you need to download that's just an you know a manual way of doing it go to greater properties and you know here where it says prop underscore app underscore abi we need to copy this and paste it here click sync now and this little problem here will disappear and you'll just say the device name or in this case the virtual device name if you plug in a physical device and it is in developer mode it will detect that and you can play it from here so now what we can do let's just run it so it launches it up it won't install it yet because it has to build you know the entire 
all of our files. The 647 files to build, again, depending on how fast your computer is, and if you're on SSD or HDD, it can you know, vary in the compilation speed. When I was doing it, when I wasn't recording, it was pretty fast, even compiling all the files. A little faster than this, but this is still pretty decent speed. But don't worry, you won't have to wait this long every single time you make a little change. This is just the first time because it's compiling the Cocos 2D library. After it's done that, it will only compile you know, any changes that we make or any new files that we add, unless you basically go to you know something like build, uh, clean project or rebuild project there's very few reasons that you you know instances that you need to do that then most of the time it will literally just take a few seconds to compile so we just gotta wait patiently for this to occur don't worry once this little step has occurred you'll probably jump to like 300 or so files completing so it is still compiling them uh, let's see what it's on now what do you got to yeah it's on 300 odd now okay we have another snack Can you guess what I'm eating? Okay, almost done. And so it's built it, it's installed it, and there we go. So if we just rotate it, and that's the correct orientation now, and this is simple as that. So let me demonstrate. Uh, first of all, your code files are in CPP, my game, classes, and they're right here. So if we go to hello world scene.cpp, and I'm gonna change it instead of it saying, oh, I've quit it now, but instead of saying hello world, say hello world XYZ. If I click the play button now, as you will see, it does not take very long at all. Compile just a couple of files, so it was done in six seconds instead of like I think over a minute before. So that's it. That's all set up now. And you know you can code away, create you know files here. If you want to close this project down, you don't press this. That will close Android Studio down. You can just go to where is it? Close project, and you get this menu back up. And that's it. We've created the shortcut in here to be able to launch Android Studio a lot easier now. And that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to pop me a message. And as usual, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.